I'm Bart Ehrman. I'm, uh, I identify as both a humanist and an agnostic. And uh, are, you, uh, are you openly agnostic? Uh, what do you mean openly? Do people know it? Or do your family know Am it? Am I in the closet? <laughs> yes, I'm quite openly agnostic. Everybody knows it. So yes, writing books about it means you're open. Huh? Uh, well, if anybody reads my books, they know I, I'm an agnostic, yeah. <laughs> right. Now, and I find it interesting, um, having read uh, most of your books, uh, how you talk about that you weren't always uh, agnostic. No, I started out as an uh, evangelical Christian. Uh, I got interested in biblical studies because I was, a, I was actually a fundamentalist and uh, as a late teenager, and that's what got me interested in the Bible. But as I developed my scholarship through graduate school, I realized that my beliefs about the Bible were completely wrong, that um, the Bible is not some kind of inerrant revelation from God. Uh, and so for years I turned, I had become a, a liberal Christian. Um, I still went to church, I still believed in God, but I was, uh, I didn't believe that the Bible was the inspired word of God. Um, but after many years of being a liberal Christian, I finally became an agnostic uh, for reasons unrelated to my scholarship. Uh, reason having to do with why there's suffering in the world if there's a God who's in control. Uh, I, 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 for years I had thought about it, I read what biblical authors said, I read what theologians said, I read what philosophers said, and I got to a point where I just didn't believe it anymore. And so I, uh, I just acknowledged at one point then that I'm probably an agnostic and that's what I've been for maybe 15 or 16 years. It sounds like it was a very um, gradual uh, process. It was, uh, you know, when some, I've, I've heard people say that I went from being, that I <laughs> went from being a fundamentalist to being an agnostic uh, because of problems in the Bible. And it's completely wrong. It was a very long process. I was a very open-minded, uh, liberal Christian for many, many years. Uh, and it was really this problem of suffering that ended up uh, creating the, the big issue for me that led me to be, to acknowledge that I'm, I'm an agnostic. It's very interesting being an agnostic scholar of religion. Uh, in this talk, I'd like to explore what it means for me to be one. I think I'll begin by explaining what I mean by, uh, what I myself mean by this term that I'm using that we all use all the time, the term agnostic. Because over the last 18 months or so, I've come to think it means something different from what I used to think. So, what I used to think before I was an agnostic was that agnostics and atheists were two degrees of the same thing. Uh, and when I first declared myself agnostic, I was amazed at how militant both agnostics and atheists can be about their terms. <laughs> Every agnostic I met thought that atheists were simply arrogant agnostics. And every atheist thought that every agnostic was simply a wimpy atheist. <laughs> Two degrees of the same thing. Well, someone will just say, I don't know. The other will admit they do know. And so that was the, I have come to think that in fact, they are not two degrees of the same thing. They're two different kinds of thing. That agnosticism has to do with epistemology. What you know, what you know. And atheism has to do with belief, what you believe. I actually consider myself to be both an agnostic and an atheist. I'm an agnostic because if somebody says to me, is there a greater power in the universe? My response is, how the hell would I know? <laughs> I don't know, so I'm an agnostic. If somebody were to ask me, do you believe in the God of the Bible? Do you believe in a God who interacts with the world, who intervenes in the world, who answers prayer? Do you believe in a supernatural divine being? No, I don't believe it. So I don't believe it, so I'm an atheist. But I don't know, so I'm an agnostic. Um, and since I'm a scholar, I prefer to emphasize knowledge rather than belief. And so I tend to identify as an agnostic. Has your uh, family, uh, was there any issues with coming out to them? Were they very religious? Did that bother them that you had given up your belief? 
Uh, when I was an evangelical Christian, uh, uh, most of my family converted to evangelical Christianity in my wake. And so, uh, so uh, when, I, when I left the Christian fold, uh, they did not leave with me. And so that they're still there wondering where I went. So yeah, you're an evangelical agnostic, I guess. Uh, yes, that's right. I, uh, I mean, the thing is, I don't, I don't really believe... You know, when, when, when I was an evangelical Christian, I believed in converting everybody to my point of view because I thought if you didn't agree with me, you were going to roast in hell. And so I was very evangelistic. I'm not, I'm not evangelistic as an agnostic because I ultimately don't think that, I mean, it certainly doesn't matter for somebody's afterlife because there, I don't believe there is an, an, after, is an afterlife. And so, uh, and I'm not that interested in people converting to what I think. What I'm interested in is getting people to be more thoughtful about whatever they believe or don't believe. Uh, and so I'm not interested in converting anybody, actually. You talk about in your books how many um, people who become ministers and learn these same facts of the Bible uh, seem reluctant to share that with their congregations. Why do you think that is? Well, pastors learn the kind of material I teach in seminaries or divinity schools if they go to a mainline denominational school. If they go to a fundamentalist seminary, of course they don't learn this unless they learn it in order to attack it. Uh, or an evangelical school wouldn't teach this kind of material. But, but Lutheran, Episcopalian, Methodist, Presbyterian seminaries teach this, this kind of material. Uh, and yet, when the people who go through those, that training become pastors, they tend not to tell their congregations. And I think it's because uh, they're afraid to make waves. Uh, they don't think that people will be uh, welcoming of it. They don't think people are ready for it. Uh, there's some issues of job security. <laughs> they they, they want to keep their job, and so uh, they don't want to ruffle too many feathers. But I think it's too bad because churches have education programs, and it's a pity that people aren't getting educated. Uh, there are adult education programs in most churches, but adults, they don't actually get educated. They, they sit around and talk about other issues, but they don't talk about the things that really most people are interested in, which is what, what does one think about the Bible? What, what does one think about theology? And do you think, though, that they may feel that uh, this may uh, put too many doubts in people's minds? Uh... Well, yeah, possibly. I think you know, pe pastors tend not to be in the business of generating doubt. Uh, professors at universities, that, that is our business as professors, because our goal is to get people to think, but, but pastors generally don't see that as their as their goal, and so they tend to shy away from these various issues that would cause problems for people. But the result is it means that they've got parishioners who really don't know anything about what scholars are saying about the material that they're most interested in, which I think is a real pity.